Amen. Tonight we are talking about the fact that at the mountain of God, it shall be provided. It shall be provided. I'm just quoting the words that Abraham spoke <laughs> prophetically about the mountain on which he attempted to sacrifice Isaac. And when I, God provided a lamb, he, pro, he spoke prophetically, at the mountain of God it shall be provided. But can I tell you, it is no longer it shall be provided. We can say right now that at the mountain of God, it was provided. At the mountain of God, it was provided. And, and you can walk in that provision tonight. You can launch into that provision. You can dig into that provision. You can lay hold of that provision tonight. And it will benefit your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's open to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. We will just read. Um, let's read verses 1 to 3. First, let's read verses 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 3. I read, Now it came to pass, after these things, that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a bond offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Verse 3. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Let us stop there for now. You know, in this particular place we just read, the Bible says Abraham was tested. Abraham was tested just as we are tested on daily basis. Do you know that on daily basis you are being tested? Abraham was tested. And what was the test? It was to determine who will Abraham live for. Will Abraham live for the gift or will he live for the giver? Would Abraham cherish the gift above the giver? Will Abraham choose the giver above the gift? That is the test. And do you know what? Even till today, you are being tested on a daily basis. Are you choosing the gift or the giver? Every time your neighbor does something that annoys you, and you feel like telling him off, you now have to make a choice. Whether to obey God and say, love your enemies, do good to those that despitefully use you. Whether to choose God. <laughs> Or to choose having your way. You know, we've been tested every blessed day. Abraham was tested. But thank God. Thank God. Abraham passed the test. You know, it is written that Abraham actually carried his son Isaac. He carried him to the Mount Moriah where God wanted the sacrifice. Abraham tied Isaac and put him on the wood, arranged the wood, tied Isaac, put on the wood. In fact, before he reached the place, Isaac had asked him, he said, but this is the wood. And, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Abraham left with faith in his heart that even though this is what God has requested for him to do. In fact, the Bible says that Abraham believed that God is able, even after he has sacrificed Isaac, he's able to bring him back to life. You know, there are a lot of people who cannot just come to, to, to grabs with the fact that if I love my enemies, 
That doesn't mean that I am under the power of my enemies. That doesn't that that as I obey God, God who gave the commandment is the one who defends me and deal with my enemies. They can't just they say, You mean I should pray for those that despitefully use me? How can I do such a thing? Is that not for them to kill me? Are you the one that is keeping yourself? Abraham believed that even if he had to kill Isaac for the sacrifice, God is able to bring him up. That's the kind of faith that God is calling us to. You know, it is a faith that I've chosen the giver above the gifts. Praise the Lord. Well, Abraham carried his journey to the mountain, tied Isaac there, tied Isaac, put him on the wood, and was ready, lifted up the knife, was ready to kill Isaac for the sacrifice. And we get to know that he believed that God is even able to bring him up again. Because he told the young men he asked to stay behind. He said, look, we, I, and Isaac, and the lad, will go up there and worship, and we'll come back. He didn't say, and I will come back alone. He said, and we will come back. He believed that God will raise him up. So when he raised the knife to want to kill Isaac, the angel of God shouted from heaven, do the boy no harm. And that was it. Let's read that portion. Um, Genesis chapter 22, from verse 15. Let's read from verse, f- verse 15. Genesis 22, from verse 15. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, Oh, sorry, not from verse 15. From verse 9. From verse 9. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand, took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here, here I am. Verse 12. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you, fo- you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Verse 13. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horn. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son, Isaac. Praise the Lord. So here we see something playing out here. Abraham passed the test. Abraham passed the test when he showed readiness to choose the giver over the gift. When he showed readiness to offer Isaac, that is how Abraham passed that test. You know, you know, every day we are tempted. Are we going to withhold the gift from the giver? Are we going to withhold even ourselves from the giver? Are we going to withhold our time from the giver? Are we going to withhold our strength from the giver? Are we going to even withhold our emotions from the giver? Abraham gave all to the giver at that mountain. And the Bible said the angel shouted, don't do the boy any lad, any, the lad any harm. And God opened Abraham's eyes to see that there was already a provision, a prearrangement. <laughs> do you know... There was already a prearrangement. There was a ram caught in the ticket. It wasn't Abraham's obedience that produced the ram. It was God. That God has already produced the ram. Obedience brought him to the place of seeing the ram. Obedience enabled him to be able to see the ram, access the ram, and use the ram. But a ram is not a product of his obedience. The ram is a product of Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, the God our provider. 
It's a product of his love, his care. But it was in the place of obedience that he can access the ram. It is in the place of obedience that you encounter the provision. Abraham encountered the provision. And, and he used the ram for the sacrifice. But look at what Abraham said. After he saw the ram and he used it for the sacrifice. In verse 14. And Abraham called the name of the place. The Lord will provide. That's where we get the name Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. As it is said to this day. In the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. In the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. The Lord will provide. And he said, and what, what is the, the very meaning of the Lord will provide is that in the mount of the Lord, the prophetic word is that in the mount of the Lord, the provision of the Lord will be found. At the mount of the Lord, the provisions of the Lord shall be encountered. It shall be seen. It shall be accessed. It shall be received. And it shall be utilized. Praise the Lord. And immediately, Abraham made that statement. Some other things started happening. The angel, from verse 15, the Bible said the angel called again a second time. The Bible said, then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sun which is on the seashore, and, as your, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Praise the Lord. Not only that Abraham found the provision of the ram at that mountain, but also at that mountain there was a provision of blessing that was worldwide in dimension. Blessing that will never end. Blessing that will be perpetuated from generation to generation and all tied to one person, Abraham. And the Bible says, In the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. That blessing shall be found in the mount of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brethren, I want you to know that that prophetic statement was fulfilled in our Lord Jesus Christ. For when our Lord Jesus Christ bore the cross to Calvary, that Mount Moriah, that place where Isaac was to be sacrificed, that exact same place where our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. That is the place where our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. Glory be to God. Where Abraham was asked to sacrifice his son was where God himself sacrifice his own son, Jesus Christ. The provision that Abraham predicted, that on the mount of God it shall be provided, God made provision for all of humanity. He made provision for your healing, for the forgiveness of your sins. He made provision for your physical needs, your, your spiritual needs, your material needs, your emotional needs, all the needs you will ever have. God bundled it and made provision for it on that cross. Jesus was God's provision for all of humanity. All that God has to give to man was wrapped up in his son, Jesus Christ. And he was delivered at that mountain. Do you know that everybody who goes to that mountain, who goes to the cross, and cross out himself that I'm not living for self anymore, I am going to live for him who loved me and gave himself for me. Do you know that that person will encounter that provision? The person who have recognized, <laughs> I am not going to live for self anymore, just like Abraham. The person who has chosen the giver above the gift. The person who now says, 
Look, oh, he, Jesus gave himself for me. He died for me that I should not live for myself anymore. I should live for him who lived for me and died for me and rose again. That person will also encounter the provisions of the Lord on that mountain. Because on that mountain, healing has been provided. On that Calvary, forgiveness has been provided. On that mountain, you know, blessings, material blessings have been provided. On that mountain, atonement has been provided. Whatever human beings need for life and godliness have been provided on that mountain. In fact, turn with me to Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, having become a cause for us. For it is written, Cost is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Glory be to God. Christ went on that mountain. He became God's provision. <laughs> and the Bible says, He took our causes upon Himself because it is written, causes everyone that hangs on the tree. So that the blessing that Abraham prophesied about and the angel of God confirmed, when Abraham said, Jehovah Jireh, on the mountain of the Lord, it shall be provided. And the angel said, look, Abraham, in blessing, I will bless you. God, God confirmed the true prophecies that on that mountain of the Lord, God provided his son as an atonement for our sins. On that same mountain of the Lord, I, the son of God became a cause for us. He took our causes upon himself. So that the blessing that the angel pronounced on Abraham, <laughs> that blessing that he said, in blessing, I will bless you. In which God actually blessed Abraham, and Abraham was blessed in all ramifications. He said that, so that that blessing might come upon you, the Gentile. Before that blessing, it was only the children of Israel that could access it through Abraham. But now we Gentiles can also access it through Jesus Christ our Lord. For the Bible says, through him, we have become partakers of the commonwealth of Israel. That it was the Father's desire that the dividing war between Jew and Gentile be slain in the body of Christ, that he might make from two different people one new man. One new man. Glory be to God. Jesus. Jesus fulfilled the prophecy. On the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. Jesus was that provision. On the mountain of the Lord. <laughs> it was that provision. It was exemplified in the ram that 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 Abraham saw and used for the sacrifice. Jesus became that provision. And through that provision, we become partakers of the blessings of Abraham. Now, what aspect of the blessing of Abraham are you looking for? It has already been provided. Jesus removed the partition. He removed the curse. He removed the things that would have prevented us so that we might access it. Abraham said, in the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. We can now say, in the mountain of the Lord it was provided. It was provided. And now by faith we can reach out and take the provision. We can reach out and take hold of that provision. Brethren, what is the provision we are looking for? Is it healing? By whose stripes ye were healed? The Bible said when Jesus was healing in Jerusalem, he was healing in lieu of the fact that he is going to bear all our sicknesses and diseases. 
at the cross. Matthew wrote about it in Matthew chapter 8 verse 17 that he bore he healed to fulfill what was spoken of by Isaiah that he carried their sorrows and bore their sicknesses. He has already borne it. He bore it and released healing to you. You know what? You can say to yourself the same thing that the woman with the issue of blood said to herself, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. You can say, when I call upon his name, when I call upon the name of the provision that was made on that mountain, my healing will manifest. If only I call upon his name, my healing will manifest. What else are you, what, 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 what provision are you looking for? It's been provided. Is it material provision? Are you in need of anything materially? The Bible says God already knows what you need even before you ask Him. He has made a prearrangement. He knew that Abraham would need a ram. <laughs> and He made a provision for it. Such that at the place of complete obedience, then there was a provision. Do you know that at the place of a complete yieldedness to Jesus, at the place of a complete submission to Jesus, there is provision. Provision for you. Don't worry yourself about how will it come about. The only thing you should care, be careful for is, am I careful to live, to submit to God? Am I careful to live in submission to God? That's the only care you have in this life. Am I careful to live in submission to God? That's all. God will sort out the other one. In a mountain of knowledge that shall be provided. Where, where, when Abraham showed commitment to complete obedience, when Abraham chose the giver above the gift, he met with the provisions of God. I tell you, God has already made provision. The provision is there. We must just continue by faith. A life of trusting Him, submitting to Him. We are going to encounter the provision. We are going to encounter the provision. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. What else do you need? Do you need to be vindicated? Have you been accused? And you need to be vindicated? There's a provision for vindication for you. The Bible says we serve it. He's a God of, of righteousness without injustice. Good and upright is He. Say He will maintain your cause and your rights. That is who He is. Glory be to God. And all you need to do, you must never allow, you must never allow the accusation of people who are wrongly accusing you to create in you bitterness, to create in you hatred, to create in you anger. That's what the enemy is looking for. If he can achieve that in you, then he has made room for himself in your life. The Bible says when you are accused falsely, when you are persecuted for righteousness sake, he said rejoice because the spirit of glory has rested upon you. Said so that's how they persecuted the prophets of old. God will step in to defend you. He defended Martha when Mary accused her. He will defend you. I mean, he defended Mary when Martha accused her. He will defend you. Glory be to God. So what is it that you need? Is it the fruit of the womb? And you are constantly struggling with, 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 uh, a miscarriage or even a threat of that miscarriage I can tell you provision for you to carry the baby full term has already been made it's already been made stand strong in the Lord claim it lay hold on it celebrate it that the Lord has already done it and live for his glory live for his glory and it is done in this life I tell you only one real need we have to worry about. Well, I just use the word worry lightly. Not that we should actually worry about it, but we should be, that, that is where our zeal should be. We have one need. They need to glorify Jesus with our lives. They need to live for His glory. That's the greatest need in life. 
That is my own greatest need. As I wake up every day, the greatest need I have is not money. The greatest need I have is not healing. The greatest need I have is not this thing or that thing. The greatest need I have is to glorify Jesus, to live for his glory. I tell you, as you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, first, as you give a priority, all other things will be added unto you. Those other things have already been provided. You will just come to encounter them. You will be brought into the place where they are kept for you. You will encounter them and utilize them. They have already been provided. For the Bible says God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. For the Bible says everything pertaining to life and godliness has already been given to us. When we believe that, we are believing the truth. We are believing the truth. It's already been provided. But it is at the place of obedience, the place of complete submission to the Lord, that we encounter them and appropriate them. And tonight I just want to challenge you. As you're starting a new year, what do you consider to be your greatest need? Abraham's greatest need was to glorify God. But in the place on that mountain of glorifying God, it was provided. All he ever wanted in life was provided. The angel called from heaven and said, Now in blessing I will bless you. It was provided. Do you know also, in that same mountain, as we go to Jesus on that mountain and put him first, prioritize for him, make the kingdom of heaven our first and foremost priority. See our need to glorify him as the greatest need of our lives. At that same mountain, it, will, it has already been provided. We will encounter the provision. We will encounter the provision. He became a cause for us on that mountain that that which was promised Abraham might be extended to us, that we might flow in it, experience it, and bless God for it. You know, tonight we're going to pray. <laughs> I'm going to pray, God, help me to live with a mighty sense of awareness that my need is to glorify Jesus. That's my greatest need. And that all that I ever need has already been provided. And just like Abraham lived to manifest a provision, this year, God, help me to live to manifest a provision. Help me to live for you. Make your glory my highest priority and live to manifest the provision that you have made in Christ Jesus on this mountain in fulfillment of Abraham's prophecy. Glory be to God. Let's go to God in prayer. Hallelujah. And I want to say that even as we are praying this prayer, if you have prayer points, send your prayer points. Send your prayer points to the platform and we'll pray together. Send it by text. So first of all, let's go to the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. We serve a faithful God. God was faithful. That which Abraham predicted thousands of years ago, God brought it to pass in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. On Mount Moriah, Jesus was crucified. It was provided. Yes. The Lamb was provided. And the blessing of Abraham was provided to all of the Gentiles. Can you tell God, thank you. Thank you for counting me in. Thank you for the provision you have made on Mount Calvary. Thank you for the provision of not only that the Lamb of God was provided to take away our sin, but it also took away our causes and brought to us the blessing of Abraham and the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. Oh, precious Father, we thank you. Precious Father, we thank you. We honor you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness at providing at this mountain. Abraham said, on this mountain it shall be provided. Jehovah Jireh, who showcased himself. And you did just that through our Lord Jesus Christ. You did not only provide him as an atonement for our sin. He also became the bearer of our curses that we might inherit the blessings of Abraham. Thank you, Lord, that the, your, 
your your oath that in blessing I will bless you has been transferred to us. <laughs> it has been transferred to us. Not only that uh, is it a promise, but it has become a promise fulfilled in Christ. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to live with a consciousness that you have been blessed. That at that mountain, it was already provided for you. That you are a blessed person. You are just navigating, you are walking with God to encounter the blessings and manifest them. Glory be to God. Can you ask the Lord to give you that you are going to live with a mentality of the blessed. Not as someone who is seeking a blessing. You've already been blessed in Christ Jesus. You ask God to help you to retain that awareness in your soul. To retain that awareness. To live in the midst of that awareness. And be able to prioritize for the glory of God in that awareness. Live as a blessed person. Live in the awareness of, as a ble- of, of yourself as a blessed person. And, 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 and live for the glory of God in that awareness. Can you pray that prayer? Arabato suta kanda brata sato kubra labre to su teke brata si hebra kanda raka to su teke prakanda labrat si teke papaka puka to su ke papakanda hebra kanda si ke papakanda si teke papaka tu bruto kuri bakanda rata sanda. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Today you, you are going to thank the Lord Jesus for going to the cross and becoming a cause for you that you might inherit the blessings of Abraham. And so you, as you thank him, claim the blessing of Abraham. That at that mountain it was provided and it was for you and you're claiming it right now. Any aspect of that blessing that you need, claim it tonight. Claim it, whether it is in healing, whether it is in, in, in material things, whether it is an opportunity that you need, opening of doors, whatever area you need, claim it. Claim it. Claim that blessing of Abraham. Glory be to God. Claim it today. Karabatu suta karibaba. Baru bata sanda raba bata sute kepra. Ibru to sute kepra to sandoku prata satiki prakanda. Labre to sute kepra kanda raba bakanda. Ibru to sute kepra to sute kepra kando kula raba bata sata. Ibru to sute kepra karaba to suta. E karamata site ke pra kanta site. He brotusu balaru baba kata site ke brotusuta. Glory be to God. Ni ka pru baba kanda rababa kanda. E kuta site ke pruta kanda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kali brutusunda rabakanda. Hallelujah. You know, the blessing of Abraham goes beyond him to even his own seed. You know, you can claim it even for your children right now. You can claim it for your children. You can claim it for your children's children. You can claim it for your seeds after you, even to thousand generations. Can you, you can now begin to deposit prayers even for your, your children's children, your great-grandchildren. You can begin to deposit prayers for them. Claim them right now. Begin to claim the blessing of Abraham. The angel said, in blessing, I will bless you. And he said, this blessing shall be transmitted from one generation to another generation.